want to introduce a, a very um, special person to myself, a great friend. I call him my bestie. Uh, man, we got to know his family and, and all of that. I don't want to get into that, man, because I want to save all of that for, for the discussion. But, uh, man, this is truly a humbling honor that I get to introduce my brother, uh, Alex Delgado. Let's welcome in the, welcome into the house. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. So, Alex, welcome to Overflow, bro. Uh, thank you for being here today. Amen. <laughs> Sorry, thank you. I thought you were going to keep going. I was no. it's just keep saying all great things. <laughs> I got used to it. Oh, but man. seriously, Alex, you know, um, you know, like uh, I shared at Juno Hall, man, you know, you're one that I would trust my family with. You know, I trust my wife and my kids with, brother. I, I thank God for you, man. And, uh, you know, our, our relationship, you know, is it, definitely a very unique one, man. Yeah. But I, I want to talk about Alex Delgado today. Brother, can you kind of uh, just uh, um, just greet greet the the family, you know, our audience, and then and then give them, you know, your your official title with uh, this amazing position that has just dropped into your lap, brother. <laughs> Amen. Well, brother, thank you for having me. An mm -hmm. honor to be able to do life with you, to be able to serve Jesus with Amen. you, and uh, just be brothers. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, what do you call your podcast listeners? Do you have a name for them? It's our, it's uh, our extended family. Extended family. Are they loaders? <laughs> or, you know, <laughs> we got leaners with Chad Beach. We got yeah, this drip. with that. Yeah. Drippers. All yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. The overflow. Yeah. Uh, overflowers. Yeah, All man. right. So uh, what's up, overflow family? Praise uh, God. It's an honor to be here. Uh, the fact that I'm breathing is a miracle. <laughs> the fact that I get to serve Jesus is uh, a double miracle. Amen. So, um, Amen. Yeah, just look forward to seeing uh, who out there didn't tune on to this channel by accident. Come on. But that your your mom or your grandma didn't send you this on accident, but that this podcast uh, would penetrate your heart. And if I get to share anything that happened in my life for that to do so, yeah. uh, it's a privilege. Amen, brother. Amen. You know, um, Alex, man, I, I, I love your testimony, brother. And that's where I really want to get to. You know, yeah. I just... You know, your journey, you know, not not just to Christ, but even to America, bro. Yeah. Um, I just, man, there, there's so much I want to get into today, bro, because, you know, there, there, a lot of people know you. A lot of people know you, but they don't know a lot about you. Yeah. You know, they they think they do, <laughs> but there's so much more to you, man, that's been on the camera, you know, every Wednesday night, you know, yeah. or on that pulpit, you know, or, or on the stage behind the pulpit, you know? Yeah. And so I want to get into that. T tell me, um, tell me about little Alex, bro. Yeah, of course. It's, it's a wild journey. Mm -hmm. You know, in 1979, I was born and at six months old, uh, we came from Cuba where Cuban immigrants, Yes. Uh, actually Cuban refugees, so in 1980, when Jimmy Carter opened up the Merrill Harbor, my family in search of the American dream, I actually have to backtrack a little there if we're really going to lay off some Please. layers. My mother uh, was supposed to come 18 years earlier wow. uh, to this country and was stuck because my grandmother had left and my mom was supposed to leave the next day. And somehow through the paperwork, government, and my biological grandfather, she was without her mother, mm. stranded in Cuba way before I was ever born. So uh, when I was born, within six months of me born, my mom said, I have to give my life, uh, uh, my son, a chance at life. Wow. You know, uh, Cuba is a very communist country, and I did not have that. I would have never had the opportunities I had in Cuba that I have here. Yeah. So we jumped on a boat. Um me, my mom, my dad, my uh, great aunt, and my cousin, who was 17 years old, came to rescue us. Mm. And he came to do what his father started. So his father had started to bring the family out of Cuba a decade earlier. And then uh, he was assassinated in Colombia. And this Alex, his son, uh, said, I'm going to finish what my father started and came to get me. And... Um, by then, since my grandmother had already been here, she remarried and was raising a family in Chicago. There was a lot of crime in Miami. And my grandfather that I knew moved to Chicago and said, I, I want better for my family. So they found the coldest place in the United States <laughs> <laughs> and said, I want better. Uh, left the beaches of Miami for yeah. the for the, the urban suburbs yeah. of, of Chicago. And, uh, you know... The same boat 
that brought me to this country was caught with 800 kilos of cocaine on it. My, my cousin would later on flee the country uh, in Spain with a new identity, mm-hmm. new family, everything. And that was kind of what I idolized growing up was okay. this cousin of mine. And I found myself uh, at a very young age, my dad and mom divorced before I can remember and grew up without a father and my grandparents in Chicago in a, in a very violent uh, neighborhood where uh, the biggest gang in Chicago moved in across the street from us. Yeah. And I remember at four years old being on a tricycle mm. and uh, hearing screeching tires. It was a Saturday afternoon. I can remember like it was yesterday hearing screeching tires. And I look and there's this big Cadillac. I'll never forget it. It had a convertible top. With a uh, with a blonde uh, gentleman driving and long hair, and uh, I see this cinder block just flying through the air, and boom, just hits him in the back of the head, and his head hits the steering wheel, and all I hear is Aah! and blood everywhere. Yeah, and I don't even know if he was dead or not. And in that moment, you know, I I I share this story all up and down the state of California yeah, yeah. now, and um thanks to you, even behind bars. Mm. But in that moment, my whole life changed. Yeah. Uh, For the first time in my life, I had a panic attack. Fear was introduced to me at four years old in such a traumatic way that it would change the trajectory of my life. I remember looking immediately after that happened to my mom down the thing and she's screaming, don't come home, don't come home, don't come home. And then boom, 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 boom. They're shooting at the other end. And in that moment, I feared for my life. I think they say that uh, one of the biggest fears in the world is public speaking. Second is being murdered. Yeah. I was paranoid Mm -hmm. of being beaten to death from the age of four on. Anywhere I would go, I would have this fear. And what I didn't know is that at such an early age, I had a crutch that the enemy had a foothold in my life. So I would go through my teenage years in early, you know, teens, adolescence mm-hmm. with this fear. And then yeah. right around eight or nine years old, I found the antidote to that fear. Before you get to that. Yeah. Before you get to that, because man, this is such a powerful <laughs> beginning, bro. Yeah. I mean, I love hearing this story. Like you yeah. said, you share it all over, you know, yeah. the state, you know, nation, man, you're going into the, into the other nations, brother, you know, yeah. and, and, and I'm blessed every single time I, I hear about this story, but can, can just real quick, I want you just to real briefly uh, uh, explain to everybody where you're at now. Like what, what is your, your position right now, bro? Yeah. Uh, I have the privilege of being the director of strategic initiatives for teen challenge. I'm not even sure I knew how to spell that when the <laughs> title came down, but um, what, what does that even mean? Real quick, real so, quick. Basically, I'm also the director of evangelism. So I am an evangelist for Southern Mm -hmm. California Teen Challenge, and I get to build a bridge into new territories that we've never been before. Okay. Okay. Now, 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 let let me stop you there. Yeah. The reason why I want to bring that up is because we have a lot of people who's hearing that, and and they're about to hear what happened to you after when you found, like you said, the antidote to that fear. Yeah. And it's going to make no sense. (laughs) It, it just like, it does not add up. Like, how does that kid who found his antidote? I know what everybody thinks that you know the antidote is, but they're yeah. about to be shocked, and and they're gonna be like, wait a minute, how did he end up becoming a what now? You know, yeah. for Teen Challenge, and we're gonna talk about Teen Challenge and all that. Yeah. You know, but I wanted to bring that up because there's there's a lot a lot of people that that's listening, and 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 they're they're that four year old Alex. Yeah, and 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 then we have youth who, who's about to hear how you found what you thought was the antidote. Right. Brother, let's go back to, to that, Alex, when, when Alex found the antidote. Yeah. So the, the antidote that I found to fear was mm-hmm. alcohol. Yeah. It was, it was exhilarating. I mean, I can remember it like it was yesterday. Some people say sin is not fun. It was fun. Mm. <laughs> it was more than Man. fun. Yeah. It was life changing yeah. as traumatic as the experience of fear was equally traumatic yes. was the exhilaration that I found from alcohol. When I drank, I said, I want to feel like this for the rest of my life. Wow. I wasn't so concerned without me puking later on mm-hmm. that 
feeling that I got, that ultimate high, that exhilaration of being fearless. I was never fearless until I got alcohol. Yeah. From the age of four, I was robbed of fear. Anxiety from the age of four. If I would get around people, I was socially anxiety. I was socially awkward. I speak in front of thousands now. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm telling you, I couldn't be in a room with 10 people without having a panic attack. I mean, just heart pounding, hands sweating, about to pass out. So the exhilaration of alcohol removing that yeah. made it the ultimate for me. And I would go through my life. Little did I know that my identity was being formed in a substance. Wow. I would need a substance to overcome fear. Then I would need a substance for social normality. Then I would need wow. a substance for this. So everywhere I would go, I would find a substance in order to overcome whatever the room needed me to be. And I had no idea that I was losing any part of myself I ever even knew wow. to a substance. And what I want my our overflow podcasters to listen to today is that this testimony that I'm about to share with you mm -hmm. is not one of a gangster. Come on. It's not one of a hardened criminal. It's not even one of a drug addict. It's one of a fatherless boy wow. who was literally shown a violence that he could not overcome and lost any direction in his life and went down a rabbit hole trying to search for a fatherly figure and trying to search to be something that I was never created to be. Oh you know, you, a lot of people see the tattoos, see the outward experience, see that I was an urban pastor and they tie that to, oh, he was a gangster. I was not a gangster. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what I was was a scared boy who didn't know how to act. And I used my outlet through all these things. So I would go through high school and, and school, Lodo, only yes. concerned with what others thought of me. Wow, and then when I drank, I could make them think of me through the lens that I wish I was. Mm. <laughs> so I wanted to be a tough guy because what happened was I ended up hating fear. So when I got fearful, I hated myself Yeah, because I carried this fear. So I thought I was a coward. I thought I wasn't good enough. I was wow. self mm. just beating myself up, looking in the mirror like you're a sissy. You're not a thug. You're not this. You need to be all this stuff. So then I would drink and try to be that stuff. And under the influence of alcohol or drugs, I could do these crimes or do and act a certain way, talk a certain way. But then I would wake up with the panic of that's not mm -hmm. you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now I'm in a vicious cycle of hating myself other than when I'm drinking. Yeah. And then you lose control. Yes. Yeah. So that little show lasted throughout high school. What like God's always hand his hand on my life. I'm going to flip your theology all over. Even when I was an enemy of God, he blessed me. My goodness. Yes, <laughs> all yes. right. If you don't believe that, read the Bible. God blesses whom he wants. Yep, yep. <laughs> Doesn't say whom he serves him really, really well. I was an enemy of God, yet he would put me in places like Joseph. Here I am, 17 years old, an immigrant to this country, a refugee with parents that speak broken English and a fatherless have no business succeeding in this world. I should be a statistic in the prison mm -hmm. institution, but yet I'm dropped on Wall Street and I'm uh, surrounded by millionaires and I'm making more money at the age of 18 than anybody in my home. <laughs> Gosh, man. And, and now my pursuit is changing. All of a sudden, it's money equals success. Mm -hmm. Money equals power. Money equals lack of anxiety. But then this crutch of not knowing who I am other than a substance collide. Yeah. So yeah. now during this collision, yes. I find myself in pursuit of everything materialistic and only being able to be under the influence. And that exploded. It was like a nuclear bomb going off to where I would go to dark levels that I could never imagine on Earth, Lodo. Man, bro, I'm pretty sure when before you saw the brick flying in the air. But you're still on that bike before you saw any of that. I'm pretty sure it was not your dream to grow to be some addict. No, it was not. And Lodo, Holy Spirit, if you're a listener right now, is all over this conversation. Man. 
I, I was just revealed something about my life that I have not known till this moment right now. I'm almost in tears right now. So we're going to fast forward the story. Yeah. Yes, I was a junkie. Yes, I was a homeless heroin addict. IV user would steal bottles of vodka to go commit crimes all day to be mm -hmm. able to keep my mm -hmm. my three week homeless run in Indianapolis. Don't get it twisted. I wasn't homeless forever, but it was 20 below zero when I was homeless. So it was not <laughs> easy. <laughs> That's like at least three years equivalent to okay, California it homeless. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know that my liberation, I found myself suicidal in Las Vegas on a last run. Damn, bro. And my mom called me and said, son, you've tried everything in this world. Yeah. You need Jesus. If you're a praying mama out there, I want to give yes. you hope. Yes. I wouldn't be here without my mama. My mm. mama raised me right. My mama prayed for me. My mama done everything and continues to this day. Yeah. She made the lack for the gap of no father. Come on. She did that. Come on. My mother took on both roles that she was never intended to do, and she Man. would gladly do it again to have the son and now forget the son, the grandchildren <laughs> yeah. that she now has. We'll get to the Amen. tribe of Delgados here. We we're, love you, Sister Maria. Yeah. Amen. I love you, mother. Amen. But wouldn't you know that I am in Las Vegas, Nevada, completely suicidal Man. on a run, just about to die mm. at a bar, drinking, living with a prostitute, and then a pimp comes. It, it tragic, crazy yeah. story. Yeah. And three months earlier, do you know that I parked in a parking lot with 300 cars in it at the stock market where I was working? And do you know what fell off of a building and landed on my car? What? A brick. Jeez, bro. The same brick. Oh, my God. That started this with fear <laughs> at four years old. You fast wow. forward 30 years, a brick God. falls off of a, a building in Chicago and out of 300 cars lands on my yes. car. And my mom did not have the finances to pay mm -hmm. for me to come home from Vegas so that teen challenge can come pick on, me bro. up from the airport. Yeah. That brick fell on my car and that that construction company knocked on my mom's door while I was in Las Vegas waiting without money when nobody would pay for a flight and handed her a check for the exact that, amount wow. that would set my liberation. Lord what started with a brick ended with a brick. Ooh, man. And that would be my journey and that just was revealed to me right now on this podcast <laughs> i never thought of that every hair on my body is standing up right now that it what started that. god redeemed amen with amen. the same enemy what the what the enemy meant for bad come on god redeemed yes yes uh so let me, man. Let me say something bro I, I already know i already know there, there's people that's going to be saved by the end of this podcast I, I already know people are going to meet Jesus through this podcast, brother. So, man, I, you know, what, what you're saying and sharing, it just it just confirms that even more, you know. So, man, brother, just speak freely, bro, because, man, the Holy Spirit is moving. God is doing something. You got you got mothers that sending this, this, you know, this this uh, this podcast to their kids right now. Yeah. Matter of fact, you got kids that sending this to their parents right now, Amen. parents that they haven't seen for weeks, you know. So, so, brother, man, I, I man, I love celebrating this moment, man, and that's that's what happens right here on Overflow <laughs> EXC, the extended conversations with the two outlaws. You know, we got Philip uh, working our cam mm -hmm. until our boy gets here, but man, I, I really want to um, you know, dig into more, bro, because. I mean, you're already throwing bombshells out there, bro. And we haven't even nicked the surface yet, you know? <laughs> I mean, you yeah. said something earlier that... Powerful. For those of you that don't yeah. think that God will bless your enemies, brother, I, yeah. the thing <laughs> the thing about your story, bro, that just hits me all the time is that you, 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 your words came after you got saved, bro. But I, I don't want to get yeah. into that real quick. I, I want to walk through this, through yeah. this, bro, because you've got a lot of life, brother, that I want to share with everybody. Yeah. You know, so, so man, you know, going back to, 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 to really finding a lot of money, bro, what happens from there, you know, you talked about being in Vegas, but I think it's important, bro, for you to talk about that journey. Yeah, of course. At 17 years old, I walked on the trading floor of the Chicago Mercantile mm -hmm. Exchange and you want to talk about an ultimate high. It was like a rush yeah. of adrenaline watching what would look like modern day Greek gods mm -hmm. jumping in a pit, screaming up and down, making hundreds of thousands of dollars in a day, not, not like a year in a day, yeah. you know, Super Bowl pools that are a million dollars. I mean, just the amount of ego and power and uh, 
the nightclubs and the strip clubs and all this stuff. It was like, that's why I came to this country because it was instilled in me at a very young age that we didn't come to this country to fail. So a, a Cuban refugee doesn't come here to like get some money and go back to Cuba. We're here. <laughs> like yes, We ain't yes. going. We're, we're thankful. Let me tell you, if you want to talk bad about America, come I on. kiss the ground America walks Man, on. I'm thankful to be somewhere mm. where I'm free. I'm thankful yeah. that I can preach the gospel anywhere I want. I'm thankful that if I choose, I can start a business tomorrow. I'm thankful that there's nothing that I cannot do in this country. Amen. So that was instilled in me at a very young age. So when I combine that with the soul searching of why am I created? Yeah. I was longing. My spirit was longing for purpose. When, when did you realize that, bro? Well, mm -hmm. now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But was there those times where you did wonder, like, what is this all about? Or did that come later? It, later. Okay, uh, okay, for okay, me, okay. I was completely veiled. There, yes. there was, I grew up Catholic. I went to church. I was an altar boy. We drank the wine behind the priest's See, quarters. Uh, there yeah. was absolutely no hand of God touching yeah. me. I, I knew that my mom prayed for me. She had every Catholic candle in mm -hmm. the, in the yeah. world lit. I knew that there was, there's was God. We had this crazy uncle who threw out his TV in the eighties. Cause some guy, David Wilkerson told him to, wow. we, we didn't even like going to their parties because Man. they were like weird in this whole religious thing. <laughs> like, Hey bro, you're you. taking this a little too serious. Wow. You're at church for like five hours. Ain't nobody got time for mm. that. We go to church three times a year tops or if somebody dies. Yeah. So, there was never a void of like, oh, I need more spirit. Okay. It was, I need more stuff, okay. more purpose. I bought into the American dream being money, yeah. not spirituality yes, or faith. So for me, it was, I never knew what I was missing till I found it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. And, and even that transition was very difficult, which is big part of my story. When you said it, it had to get worse before better. So we leave Las Vegas. I get in this teen challenge uh, van that they pick me up mm -hmm. with a coffee cup full of alcohol. Yep. And uh, they don't even know I'm drinking the whole way there. And then they have to drop me off at a hospital where I would medically need to be detoxed because of the amounts of alcohol and drugs. The, the guy came in and he's like, is there a drug you haven't taken? Because, yeah, you know, yeah. I took the drug test. It's just... Well, well, how much yeah. how much drugs did you have on your way to Vegas? Oh, yeah. I, I took 50 Norco Vicodins mm -hmm. at one shot and jumped on a plane. Yeah. I thought it would kill me. I started withdraw about a day later. Yeah. Uh, so it was just an unsurmountable amount of drugs were mm. going into my system. Leading up to this, my stomach would shut down because my muscles would get so high they couldn't. Uh, I couldn't urinate. I would need a catheter in my twenties to urinate Yeah, uh, yeah. on my own. Yeah. I couldn't. I went to the thing. I had almost two liters backed up in me by the time they put the catheter inside me. There's like, what is going on? Yeah. You know, a 20 something year old should not have to deal with this. Um, so I get the yeah. teen challenge and I thought it was a cult. You know, I was like, <laughs> there's people raising their hands. I never seen anyone raise their hand for worship before. Was. That was a big deal to me. Yeah. Uh, so it was just, it, it was hard to explain people praying in the spirit, yeah. people speaking in tongues. I was like, what on earth mm. is that? So it really had no, con no background of church yeah. whatsoever. But I did see something in the directors that were there. They were genuinely happy and genuinely wanted to help people. Wow. And, and I was like, why? Yeah. Why? Yeah. I didn't understand wanting to help someone for nothing. Mm. I didn't understand serving. I, I didn't grow up in a culture. I mean, we were, we love our family. We serve our family. But just to serve anyone yeah. for absolutely no reason and nothing to gain was Jeez. foreign to me. And I said, well, you know, and I remember my grandfather was kind of about to die. Uh, it was towards the end of his life. And I remember breaking down drunk out of my mind uh, one time, just saying, hey, promise me you'll live. You got to see me do right. You got to see me do right. And we and, you know, I I gave my life to the Lord on December 30th, 2010. Thank you, uh, a man got up. They took us to a conference yes. where I truly thought everybody was on drugs. Uh, <laughs> it was the International House of Prayer Conference mm -hmm. in Kansas City. Uh, there's 50,000 people in the room. They're flopping around like fishes at the front. I'm like, this is nuts. Uh, and about three days in, 
I I start to say, man, if if you're God, if you're real, God, you have to like show me. And this man gets up and begins to preach a sermon. He says, "Godlessness in the last days, they will be lovers of money, yeah. boastful, proud, disobedient to their parents, the type of men who creep into women's bed loaded with sin." And I was like, man, he's talking about me. In that moment, that Kairos moment, that opportune time where all eternity was waiting for this moment for me, something clicked. If you're a listener, that may happen to you right now on this podcast, but there's there's the moment that yeah. you have to remember for eternity because if you're truly born again, it's a moment. <laughs> yes. And it's a very holy moment and yeah. it's a very defining moment yeah. where in that moment, everything changes. Even if your physical hasn't caught up yet to it, spiritually everything in that moment has to change and you go from life to death and they they did an altar call i didn't know how to get saved brother nobody called me walk me through some uh repent one two three or I, I didn't i didn't have a clue but i hit my knees and i could not stop crying i said remove my addiction remove my addiction remove my addiction remove my addiction over and over and over and over again gosh and i got up and i was a different man I, mm. uh, another teen challenge staff kind of walked me through what had happened. The next day I got baptized in the Holy ghost game over. Yeah, that was it. Thank you. God. That was the power that God knew. I couldn't even go 24 hours of Christianity without. Amen. <laughs> he Amen. knew that I needed something. Yes. Yeah. Now, now, now I want to go back just a little bit. Yes. You, you said that you didn't even know how to get saved. Yeah. There's people right now, you know, Alex, and we take this thing so seriously. We don't even know if they're going to make it to the end of the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. I think right now is a good time to let them know how do you get saved, brother? Yeah. yeah. If you're a listener right now and and you re, you feel the prompting of the Holy Spirit telling you that it this is your day, this is your Kairos moment, yes. the opportune time that you are going to give your heart and soul to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. The Bible's real simple. Here's the greatest news on earth. All who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Doesn't matter what you did. Doesn't matter what you're doing right now. You may be at a table right now full of drugs, crying, listening to this. I just had a prophetic vision of somebody at a table right now mm. full of drugs. This is for you. Mm. If you call upon Jesus, you shall be saved. It says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe it in your heart, the kingdom of God will save you. Jesus died on a cross for that moment that yes. you shall be saved by the blood of Jesus that created a new covenant, which means we get access to him now. And then you'll get some power to go flush those drugs that are on that table too, right after this prayer. Amen. So we can pray right now, brother. Do you want to brother, lead them? Go ahead, brother. Yeah. Lead them. Repeat this simple prayer. If you believe it, the confession of your mouth shall save you. If yes. you believe it in your heart. Repeat after me, Lord Jesus, Jesus. I invite you into my heart. I invite you into my heart. I ask you to save me. I ask you to save me. I confess with my mouth. I confess with my mouth. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. I believe that in my heart. I believe that in my heart. Forgive me, Father. Forgive me, Father. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. I need a savior. A savior. In Jesus' name. In Jesus Amen, amen, and amen. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Ooh. the family of Jesus. Amen, You're amen. sitting there all tore up right now, crying. You don't know what's going on. Welcome. That's called the presence of God. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. That's 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 how we do it right here on Overflow EXT, man. These things you're supposed to lead to the end of everything, but nah, man. We don't. You know, it's so crucial, man. We, you know, the, tomorrow's promise to no man. Yeah. You know, and we don't know if you're gonna make it to the end of the show, but man, I, there's thousands of angels in heaven right now, Alex. Amen. Just going bonkers right now because God's baby boy or baby girl came home today. You get saved at at, uh, at the conference in uh, at the IHOP or um, Interha International House of Prayer. Yes. Everything, uh, you know, you got saved, you know, now you're filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, bro. And everything is perfect. Tell me about that. Yeah. So I would go uh, on a three month honeymoon, mm -hmm. just it filled with the joy of the Lord. Oh, my gosh. There's Jesus. There's Jesus. Yes, there's Jesus. Yeah. I saw Jesus in my Cheerios. I saw <laughs> Jesus in my steak. It was like this white light of yeah. there's a purpose. I'd look at the sky. Jesus did that. Yes. You know, the trees. Jesus did that. Jesus. 
uh, didn't have a, a, a strong theology or anything. No. I just saw Jesus everywhere. Mm. You know, gr- uh, granted, I when I got the Teen Challenge, I thought John 316 was Steve Austin, the wrestler. Man. Like, I'm not even kidding. Yes. The three Because that was my only Austin comparison. Yeah, yes. it was like 316, like the wrestler. And they're like, uh, bro, where are you from? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, these people then seen someone like me walk through the door. Yeah. And it was just, you know crazy that i i just saw jesus i'm telling my family about jesus i'm like jesus is gonna take care of all my problems and this and that well i had a lot of problems yes, and sir. you know after the three months the problems were still there wow you know and the reality of the problems and you know very early on for me when i was saved i knew that i was called to full-time vocational ministry okay like no one had to tell me mm-hmm. and everyone kept telling me and everyone kept but I knew that, okay, this is probably why you were created. Yeah. However, I did not want to go through the process of that. Okay. You know, what, what, from what I could see, you know, ministry meant poor mm. <laughs> and I didn't really want to be poor coming yes. out of this, you know, uh, yeah. Life stock style. market, yeah. you know, pursuit, American dream, uh, obsession of what you have defines you. And then, you know, and then you could justify just about anything. Well, God called me to be a good tither. God called mm-hmm. me to start a business. So, um, and then some inappropriate relationships that I wanted to pursue. Again, granted, prior to Teen Challenge, I thought, and this is for me, uh, with absolute conviction that you, there is no way you can be married without at least living for someone for two to three years. Wow. Like conviction. Like I would scold you. Like how on earth are you supposed to get married if you haven't? It's like getting a car and not test driving. Are you crazy? Yeah. Like I was having these conversations with like i was kind of telling the teen challenge staff they were dumb for waiting for marriage like dude you're gonna make the biggest mistake of your life Mm. with like a conviction (laughs) one thing about me i'm like peter (laughs) like right or wrong i'm gonna be convicted (laughs) about it uh and you know i had no idea about this christian life so we're we're getting towards graduation and and i clearly knew i was supposed to go one way and i said no and I, and I went another way and I had friends go the right way yeah. and uh, said, no, I'm going to pursue ministry. Had these dreams of coming to California and mm. uh, very early on reading Nikki Cruz run, baby run. I felt like yes. God was telling me you're coming to California yeah. and you're going to meet your wife and have children here. And you're going to be a traveling global evangelist. Mm. Like early. I heard that yeah. or way early. Like I, maybe before I got saved because yeah. I read crossing, the, I couldn't sleep for 17 days straight. So yeah. I read crossing the switch, but run baby run second chance, uh, all in three weeks of being a teen challenge. I those read, um, had nothing else to do. And mm-hmm. so I, uh, chose my way and God was clearly saying another direction. And, you know, God's pretty gracious. He'll let you taste everything you think you want. Mm. You know, I started a company. I started tithing the teen challenge. I, I was pursuing all of my plans and I built my kingdom just to watch it fall. Wow, brother. So I got in a relationship that was completely ungodly, not mm. about God. Nothing about it was about God. And I uh, would go to the darkest place of my life. What's funny is before Las Vegas, uh, I was in pills you know, cocaine, yeah. uh, prescription medicine, and massive amounts of alcohol. Mm-hmm. And now, after being saved, after filled with the Holy Spirit and walking away, is when I became an IV heroin user. After? After, yeah. The Bible is very clear. It says it would better that you have not known mm. than to have tasted and seen yeah. and walked away. And I was angry with God. I was full-blown angry with God. I was like the spoiled brat said, you didn't give me what I wanted right now. Uh, so I'm going to take it. Mm. And then, and then I ended up in the darkest year of my life. I thank God it was only a year, uh, but it was full of homelessness, addiction, theft, crime, heartbreak, uh, hepatitis C, uh, inner, uh, it, I was con- contaminated a needle. I use, I contracted the, wow. the virus, all of this stuff. Uh, to hit the absolute low of my life. And this is after you get saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. bro. Yeah. And then God blessed me. I had a company. I was tithing yes. to Teen Challenge. Yeah. I was the poster boy of Teen Challenge. Mm-hmm. I would be sharing my testimony in front of 5,000 watching yeah. pornography. Yeah. Uh, I, I had this appetite for the flesh 
Uh, and I didn't really know any other way of life. However, okay. I was still intrigued by this Jesus, man. Yes. And here's something else to flip people's theology upside mm-hmm. down. God still used me. Man, yeah. Powerfully. Yeah. yeah. Don't ever judge your relationship with God by the works he allows you to do. Yeah. Because my relationship mm. was shallow, empty, and I was full of sin, yet God was using me in a very powerful way. Yes. Yeah. Still to, you know, it, it says the call of God is without, without repentance. Rep- yes. Yeah. There's some of us who have some really good gifts that could mm. operate without the presence of the Holy Spirit in us. Man. And God will still use the presence in other people yeah. to get saved. And thank you for for, for, yeah. for saying that, bro, that. You know, don't measure it, you know, by how much God is using you because yeah. God will use a donkey. God will Come use on. anybody. It is, yeah. you know, let's not think, you know, kid ourselves that we're somebody special. Like, oh, he'll just dismiss what I'm doing because I'm doing such a great job for him. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah buddy. exactly. There's a, there's, a, there's a man in the Old Testament called King Saul, right? Yeah. And King Saul was a murdering, breathing backslider trying to kill David. And, and, and you know, remember, you know, uh, King David's servant, when they caught King Saul slip, slipping, literally sleeping, you know, he said, man, man, uh, he, he turns to David and said, David, Lord, let me run him through, you know, let me, let me kill him because he's trying to kill you. Yeah. And remember what David said, thou shalt not touch the anointed of the Lord. It's so crazy, bro. King Saul, backsliding, murderous, trying to chase this innocent man down to kill him was still anointed. Yeah. So, so thank you for saying that, brother. You know, just because God is using this, that doesn't mean that he's, he's excusing us. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And uh, pride will come before the fall. Yes. Yeah. You know, a, a good gauge. It, I was full of pride. I was full of, look at what I'm doing for Jesus. Mm-hmm. Look at the things that I can accomplish for the Lord. Yeah. Yet I still had this internal battle. And out of the abundance of the heart, the, the mouth speaks and the heart is wicked above all else. Yes, <laughs> and man. Come it on. will control your life. My heart wanted yeah. uh, ungodly relationships. Mm-hmm. My heart wanted... For me to build stuff, for me to do stuff, and I found myself in the worst position of my life with nowhere to look but up. Through miraculous events, uh, the men of God, of of the church that I belong to in in Napanee, Indiana, from uh, Napanee Missionary Church, NMC, we call it Pastor Dave, and a dear brother named Rod Meyer. Uh, was on a treadmill one day and he heard the Lord say, if you don't go get my son, he's going to die. Wow. And I was walking down. I had just sold a phone that somebody else sent for me and got some uh, heroin and had a a decent amount of heroin, at least to get me through a day or two uh, in my pocket. And I was walking down a street in um, downtown Indianapolis and I just have, I didn't know where I was. I was just walking down the street and this guy knocks on the door, says, Alex. And I was walking past the homeless uh, uh, shelter, but a different part, like a mile away is their detox center. Mm-hmm. And at that exact time, my friend was calling on the phone Yeah, and they said, Hey, like God told me if you don't come, get, if I don't come get you, you're going to die. And I, and I repeated him, if you don't come get me, I will surely die. And I was high enough in that moment that um, I said, yes. So I waited two and a half hours. They were about two and a half hours away and the car came to get me. And it was uh, a fellowship of uh, some uh, fellowship missions in uh, Warsaw, Indiana. The director, Eric, got in his suburban and came and got me and they would take me to the hospital and the only reason I went is because they promised to give me methadone. Mm-hmm. So it was like a Friday. I had enough drugs in my pocket. So I was like, okay, Monday we'll go to the methadone clinic. We'll straighten this out. Yeah. And well, Monday never came. Sunday, they broke the news to me that, hey, we've all decided there's no way we're going to give you. And I uh, had a come to Jesus moment with Rod. We were face to face about to swing on each other in that hotel. And then I broke. Uh, I just broke he left and then he, then he came back with his head between his mm-hmm. <laughs> hands like i can't leave the holy spirit won't let me leave and i broke and i bowed my knees on february four, uh february 20th 2014 i bowed my knee in the hotel Jeez. in warsaw indiana and i said god if you can do anything with this life, you loved me from the gutter was my exact prayer. And Rod would testify to that. 
He actually stood up in my wedding and still a friend. <laughs> uh, I'll be sending him this podcast. Rod uh, reminds me of that prayer often, but I said, Lord, it, you love me from the gutter as much as you love me on the stage. Yeah. And I gave my, rededicated my life there. But what I really did there was surrender. Mm. I had a moment where I said, that's it. You know, I still buck and fight, but at the end of the day, God have your way. <laughs> that's it. We, we are laying it down. And brother, I'm proud to say that that's my sobriety day. Thank you, God. February 20, 2014. I laid it down. Wow, bro. It's going to be nine years this February. Oh I don't even know goodness. how. I don't even know. Nine years, five kids later, four. I don't know how many I got. Yes. Uh, I got four children, a wife, uh, friends like you. But the, the, the surrender in that moment wasn't so much that, okay, God, I, I, I surrendered all your rules and, and all this. God, I surrender for the plan you have for my life. Mm -hmm. And I surrender to yes. serve you. Yeah, that I will work for you all the days of my life and do nothing else but yeah. that. So wherever I go, you know, I'm on assignment. Now, 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 if you could, bro, look at the camera. Yeah, and and I need to talk to 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 those who are addicted. Yeah, maybe not to drugs, maybe just to self, or maybe to just an image that they have of themselves, yeah. or what they think they should be, and talk to them because that is the moment. Yeah, first yeah. moment is when you get saved. Yeah. But we ask everybody all the time, when did you get saved? Well, when I really got saved. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They got saved when they got saved. Yeah. But we know what they're saying. What they're saying is, well, I, I surrendered. Yeah. I completely surrendered, you yeah. know. So talk to them, you know, about this surrenderance, what yeah. that means. If you're out there and you're struggling with alcohol, the first thing I want to say is there's hope. You're not alone. And there's plenty of people who have gone through this with you. And if you need help, yes, there's a link that they're going to share on this yes. podcast, the Teen Challenge. It is absolutely free. Tomorrow, you can be in an interview. By next Monday, we can have you in a program. If you're anything like me, I could not do this without a program. <laughs> now, however, the power of God can set you free. This moment that I had was more than just a prayer. It was a white flag. I'm done. But I had to get to a moment because we we hear the story of the prodigal son mm. in Luke 15. And that's the moment I had. All I can say is I felt like I was in prison and I had the keys. I didn't have to be there. Some of you may be wow. in prison listening to this podcast. Come I don't on. Know. You probably got a phone that shouldn't be yes. there. But I did not have the... I had the ability to walk out. I did not have to stay in that prison. And that's what I want to share with you. You don't have to stay where you are. Yeah. You don't have to take another hit. You don't have to do it. I know you don't have the strength right now, but in the surrendering, I love Laura, Laura Dangle's song. I touched the sky when my knees hit the ground. Wow. When my knees hit the ground and my tears hit that ground, I was empowered and said, God, this is your life. I still got up homeless. I still got up jobless. I still got up with people hating me, owing money, and all of that. All of that was still there. But when I got the power, I could say, I could do this. Through him, I can do all things. Yes. That I In Christ, I can do this. And more importantly, it's a journey. Because everybody loves nine years later on a podcast <laughs> with a clear mind and a clear head. But then, then the journey began. And then you go through the hard times, the mental health issues that you Amen. have to work through. There's therapy that needs to be involved. Yes, yes Christian therapy is a very good idea yes. because like I started this podcast, I had trauma from a very early age that I had to deal with and still have to unpack. So there is hope in Jesus Christ. Amen. He can set you free right now in this place. Click the link below. We have a 24 seven mm, prayer and uh, and help hotline. You can call right now, yep. right now. Click the link below. We have it all there for you. And someone can minister to you right now. You can give your life to Jesus on that line. Yes. We're going to have like three altar calls in this I'm, podcast. I'm yes. yep. I mean, it's Jesus, it's Jesus, it's Jesus. But here's the thing. You have to die. Unless a seed dies, it can't produce life. So your will to continue doing drugs, to continue doing this, to continue to numb out. Jesus, I, I give it to you. And then he comes in and then you become to the family of Christ. And there's an army waiting to help liberate. you. Yes. 
we can't do this alone. You can't do it alone. I can't do it alone. So if you're there online, stop what you're doing. Yes. Surrender Amen. to Jesus and his plan. Pick up the phone for help. Amen. And help is already on the way. Man, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, yeah. brother. Yes. Yeah. Make sure, even if you got to pause this podcast, pause it. You can always come back yeah. to it. Your your salvation, your life is on the line. Your family is on the line. Click that, click that link now and, and get the help. You know, um, Alex, you know, you mentioned that Rod stood at your wedding. Yeah. Tell me about the family, bro. Oh, man. I have a beautiful wife named Megan Delgado. Yeah. Let me, uh, she's my hero. I can't, uh, I can't think of a greater gift that God has given me than a praying woman Thank you, than a woman who's been birthed out of the same ashes. Amen. You know, we are the perfect recipe for disaster <laughs> <laughs> in the natural to addicts, <laughs> come on to uh trauma filled yeah. baggage carrying, Man. uh, one Caucasian mm -hmm. <laughs> and one loud Cuban. <laughs> Just, I love Lucy rated x uh, written uh, all uh, over it yeah, yeah. is is what we should be yeah but god but god but the holy spirit said i'm gonna choose the foolish to shame the wise we have plenty of people rooting for us to fail out there <laughs> yeah. plenty of people oh they'll never get it right oh they'll never get it and they're right we never will but the holy spirit has taken yes. two people from polar opposite sides of the united states Polar opposite upbringings. My wife didn't have to worry about drive-bys at four years old, yeah. but she had her own trauma. And yeah. now he's joined together where we have four amazing children. I have yeah. one prince named Luke yes, Joseph, Luke. who's a 15-year-old yeah. boy uh, ba playing baseball at Fresno Christian. We are so pleased yeah. and proud of him. I have a four-year-old world changer. We call her a little <laughs> leader. She's uh, extremely passionate yes. about anything Amen. and will let everyone know it. Uh, Havana Ruby Delgado. Amen. Havana. And then we have our little bundle of joy, mm -hmm. who's kind of like a sarcastic joy. She's a blonde-haired, blue-eyed Cuban. First one in our family. Uh, yeah. Sela Marie yes. Delgado. And then a Sailor. newborn uh, was uh, our newest little bundle mm -hmm. of joy. And last yeah, bundle of yeah, joy, yeah, yeah. it is over in Jesus' name. Four and no more <laughs> is what I've what? been told. Yeah, okay. yes, you sure you're done? I'm done. December okay, yeah. 2nd, the doctor is sure about it too. So, so we have a, a date amen. to be done. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. I'm going um, to have Philville ask, ask some questions before yeah. we get there. We got... Brother, we got a lot of women in the audience, so they're gonna yeah. get mad at me if they don't, uh, if I don't ask you about the moments, bro. Yeah. yeah. And just how how did you end up with, like you said, this beautiful wife of yours, brother? Yeah. I, I know that there's some shoe game involved with that, you know, uh -huh. but it's a beautiful story, bro. Talk about yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, let me quick say before I get scolded at home, the last baby's name is Zoe. <laughs> oh, Zoe. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Zoe yeah. Alexandria Delgado. Oh, that was she, Zoe. Yeah. I, yes. I didn't. I didn't know if I said the oh, full yes. name. And we're having. Pictures yeah. going on right now. Okay, so perfect. I'm looking at right now a picture of soccer. One of your daughters yes. is playing soccer. Yeah. She wow. she scored four goals on Saturday, one in the wrong goal. I told her, put the ball in the net. She just put it in. It didn't matter <laughs> oh, which okay. one. Yeah, that's but funny, yeah. yeah, she's she's a little aggressive, little world Amen. changer. Yeah. So so tell us tell us about the moment, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the moment started with the first girl. So we were at a teen challenge event, mm -hmm. uh, uh, spiritual emphasis in Riverside, California. And I remember being through enough trauma to say, I don't want nothing to do with girls right now. Yeah. Like I'm here for Jesus. And then here comes this blonde bombshell. Uh, and I looked and she had these amazing sneakers on and I'm a sneaker head from Chicago. <laughs> My mom used to take me out of school to go wait in line for the new Jordans to drop. It's like a, almost like a religion in Chicago yeah, sneakers, yeah. but uh, grew up on this. So she had these amazing Air Max ones, white with these clouds mm. and they were very limited the shoe. And I remember saying nice shoes. Uh, and she was like, thanks. I'll let you borrow them sometime. And I was like, <laughs> what did she just say to me? You know? Yeah. Yeah. And just like, kind of like in her own, confident type of way mm -hmm. and then she won't tell you this but she kept staring at me the rest of the wow. evening so there's I'll, always two versions of the yeah, story right? yeah well yeah, this is my yeah, podcast yeah. Yours, is the truth. yours is the truth yeah yours is the truth yeah. bro amen. Yeah. amen so 
uh, there's a worship moment uh, at spiritual emphasis, an altar call moment, mm. and it was uh, break every chain. Oh, oh wow. yes. came on. Sue Brown and uh, Armed and Faithful, and they they called us forward, and it, they had break every chain and then uh, split the sea. So I will walk right through it, yeah. and I I just went to the altar, eyes closed, hands in the air, pursuing God with everything I had, really there for Jesus in that moment, wholeheartedly going in for Jesus, and this hand keeps hitting my left hand, uh. And hands in the air. And I had this staff member at Teen Challenge once prophesy over me. He said, you, you know, you're going to be running so hard after God and look left and your wife will be right there. I didn't think nothing mm -hmm. of it. Yeah. So now my now sister-in-law, who was there with Megan's brother, who went through Teen Challenge mm -hmm. as well, took and hip checked my wife into me during this worship <laughs> set where it almost knocked me down, like yeah. th threw her into me in the middle of like a worship set. Yeah. And yeah. I looked and there she was. I was wow. like, what the heck? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you, Lord. Yeah. Uh, I can't say I, I was not thinking about her after that. I don't, you know, but I remember just being in a place of brokenness and saying, God, you know, one day, I know you're going to give me a special woman. Uh, I can't say in that moment. Sure. I knew it was her. I probably hoped it was her. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't like, there's your wife. It was the beginning of, am I willing to pray for this woman? Wow. You know, yeah. she was in wow. a, a program of restoration. Mm. where, And I thank God for the way God put barriers and boundaries on our relationship Man, where gosh. I was able to pray for someone for six months without knowing them every day. Gosh, I prayed for her every day while she was in restoration. And then her mom stalked me online. That's a different story. If Denise <laughs> no. is listening to, she was like, hi, I heard you met my daughter. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you're a little creepy, okay. but then we became friends. <laughs> okay. And then they came uh, to visit her and true story. I was able to take Luke, my son now yes. on a date before I took Megan on a oh, date okay. because nice. I had no yeah. access to even talk to Megan for six months after yeah. that. Then she graduates six months and we go to the happiest place on earth. Mm. Disney. Oh, I, yeah. I called okay. her family the Griswolds because we all went to Disney on our first date together. The yes. parents, the son, okay. uh, the brother, the sister that hip checked yeah. me. Oh all this. It was 104 degrees in LA. Oh, wow. yes. Disney oh, yeah. with an eight year old melting down. Oh, <laughs> we tried by yeah. fire. <laughs> Just came back God. last week too. Okay. Hot. Yeah. yeah. So we, we went on our first date and mm. then, and then she moves to Fresno. Yeah. You know, this is her hometown where she's from. Well, I yeah. had already uh, been youth pastoring in L.A. at yeah. Lakewood Life Center in Long Beach. Yes. And I began to pray. And, you know, they all but they offered me a job, car, house, the whole thing coming out of Teen Challenge. Perfect package. Yes. And yeah. I remember turning it down mm -hmm. because I knew I was supposed to come to Fresno. No that, job. That, wow. No nothing yeah. in Fresno yet. Surrendered. Surrendered surrendered. I was like, I, I believe this is the woman that we're going to change the world with. Mm. You know, I didn't pick yes. my wife. She's hot. Mm. I love her. We make a lot of babies, <laughs> but there's no question about Beautiful that. Yes, but yes, I, yes. I picked my wife uh -huh. as a co-laborer in the kingdom. Oh yes. I picked my wife because we were going to change the world together yeah. and she'd been to hell and back with me. So we, we build each other up. We're each other's best friends. We're learning every day. We're in marriage counseling now because we mm. want it. This is the end game. If yes, you're not in marriage counseling, so you should yes. be like, mm. or at least be mentored by people who Praise are. God. We're only five years into this. Mm. And if we are naive enough to think we're going to charge the gates of hell and the mm. enemy's not going to throw darts at our marriage, yeah. you know, who are we kidding? We, we, there's future battles we know nothing about with our children. Yeah. So we're we're investing now in yeah. that for what's to come but yeah and amen bro god opened up a door brother my pastor in la called a pastor in fresno yes uh without me knowing and the pastor in fresno had declined mm. because he couldn't answer the phone because he was uh, in a meeting with his youth pastor resigning 
So then he calls him back and says, hey, you called yesterday. Sorry, I was in a meeting with my youth pastor. He's like, well, that's funny. I'm calling you about a youth pastor. I got a guy. You know anyone who needs one? He's like, I need one. (laughs) (laughs) And and just like the brick. (laughs) Yes, yes, right. Here we see Jesus connecting dots. Thank you, God. It's amazing when we look back and we see God's fingerprints everywhere. Everywhere. And we didn't didn't even know. We thought he wasn't there. We thought he didn't exist. They didn't care. It was too busy taking care of good people. Yeah. And then when we look back, it's like, oh, my goodness, Lord, you were right there the whole time. I know that you're, uh, you've are you been uh, a father of the fatherless. You've been in youth. Yeah. I've seen from a distance just just I, I don't I don't really don't know you like Lodo. I've just seen you in ministry, just mm-hmm. in operating your anointed brother, just out there ministering so many. And and uh, in in October is Pastors Appreciation Month, and mm. we just thought just we just wanted to share a little soundbite of somebody who just wants to say a little hello to you. Hi, PA. I just wanted to say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for everything that you have done for my family and I. Um, it's been such an honor and a blessing to have you in our lives. But one of the things that I wanted to say that I'm most grateful for is the way that you have shown what it looks like to love somebody no matter what. As a youth pastor, I know it wasn't easy, but there was not a day and there was not a youth that stepped foot into that place that didn't feel loved by you and Megan. To this day, you guys continue to to show and be an example of what it looks like to love people no matter what skin color they are, no matter what area of town they came from. And I just want to say thank you because you've had a big impact on me in that area of life of just loving people no matter what, even when it's hard. So thank you so much. I appreciate you more than you know. Bye. You know whose voice that is. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's that the voice. infamous little brat of all <laughs> <Yeah>. brats. <laughs> Samoan Saeli. <laughs> how, how, what, what do you, what's your response to that? I just tears instantly. Um, you know, as Phil was saying, you know, you're anointed. In my mind, I was saying, we just love people. Uh, you know, that's. I don't have a recipe for advancing ministry or building ministry or X, Y, Z. Um, I know what it's like to be burnt out (laughs) and a quick gauge for me and burnout is in my loving people uh, because that's what we do. Yeah. Like we love people. Uh, I want to see people win. Everyone. I'm not in competition with anyone. Yes. I want to see people win yeah. in life. I want people to, I, I've believed that me coming to this country, I was given an opportunity to do anything. And I want others to believe that mm-hmm. and how much more with Christ. So that's, that's, that's mm-hmm. what ministry is to us. I, that's the highest compliment. If I'm remembered for loving people, that's a, that's it. That's enough. I don't want to be remembered Amen, for sermons bro. or fancy preaching or, uh, doctrine, uh, I would want to be met right there. That, that honestly is the ultimate, um, Praise God. that's the ultimate compliment she's ever given me. She probably won't give me one again. So, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, you better keep uh, the recording cause you know, she is, Yeah, you know, um, and, and I want to say, Alex, um, uh, as a father and as her father, mm. I want to say thank you, brother. You know, I, I want to get into talking about Teen Challenge cause you probably have everybody wondering what is Teen Challenge? <laughs> what is it? You know, yeah. but I definitely want to get to that. But, it was a big part of your life, you know, your recent life where you were a youth pastor. Yeah. And I want to thank you, brother, because, man, you've done such a fantastic job at being a youth pastor there at a Cornerstone. And then you were also at Northeast, you know. Yeah. Uh, there was a moment in our lives. And uh, <clears throat> and you 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 remember, you know, my uh, found my little sister, you know, and my niece, you know, um, burned it, you know, in, 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 uh, in her car, you know. And that just set the bomb off in our household. And I uh, I had to do a lot of things. I had to be a lot of things, you know, to keep everything together. But I thank God so much that one thing I didn't have to be is my kid's youth pastor. Amen. Because you were their youth pastor, bro. You you allowed me to just be dad. And I will always be grateful for that, brother. You know, I, I'm so grateful. You know, today's a moment. You know, I get to sit with two of my best friends, you know. Who, who both baby girls, you know, are my goddaughters, you know, and I thank God so much, brother. And I pray, bro, that I get to return the favor, you know, in helping you guys raise your kids just as much as you helped us with ours, you know, all of them, you know, Cypress all the way to Sa'ili, you know. So thank you, bro. But I want to talk about youth pastor, Pastor Alex. 
I know that you've got some nuggets, bro. Uh, you don't walk through Cornerstone <laughs> without picking up a few or Northeast. What are just some of the things that's on your heart, bro, before we, we start talking about Team Challenge? Yeah. You know, youth ministry for me was, it's hard to explain being thrusted uh, out of an addictive chaos of a life to having the light of the world shined on you to being uh, zealous for the Lord, almost like a Paul to the apostles type of moment where the apostles like, bro, get this Paul guy out of here. We don't know what's going on here yet. Um, I was just radical. And um, there's so much that I did not know. Okay. Because of being what I call an outsider. Uh, I was not raised in the church. Mm -hmm. So I've had to learn the church. I'm a baby in the church still. Uh, my wife and I are about to jump on our first ever uh uh, Wednesday night group that we don't lead. Wow. I've never been part of a group I haven't led in mm -hmm. the local church ever. Wow. <laughs> I've never until this year been a member of the local church. Yeah. You know, I, I don't understand the local church mm -hmm. other from the only view I have Leadership. thus far is staff. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, that that's a good thing and a very bad thing. Mm -hmm. So um, what I would say to youth pastors out there is concentrate on the importance yes. of loving people mm. and concentrate first and foremost above all else, above all else on your relationship with God. God. Out of the overflow of that, there's plenty of time to learn leadership. There's plenty of time to learn uh, administrative ministry. There's plenty of time. Those can wait. What cannot wait is your relationship with God that you have to fight for because yes. ministry gets so busy that you just take Jesus on the way. And I, I don't know about you, but for me, it's hard to minister out of Jesus on the way mm. today. I'm sitting here from a well of overflow, Praise God, brother. a well of overflow yes. because I didn't have eight meetings before I got here. Mm. You know, I can meditate. I can think I can prepare, you know, allow yourself margin because we make the biggest mistakes when we're most tired, Amen. irritable, hungry True. and, and time deficient. And as pastors, you will always fight time. <laughs> there was never enough time. I feel like the six years I blinked <laughs> and, yeah. and it was over. And, so and, true. and you can only work on three good things a year. Okay. That's it. Like, so for me, it, I had to work on preaching. I didn't know how to preach. Like mm. I, I'm six years, seven years into this. I feel like I'm just finding my voice now oh. and confidence <laughs> yeah. in my voice. I'm not trying to be up here and be anybody else, but who God yeah. created me to be. And unapologetic about yes. that, not in a prideful way, Come but on. I can't wear your armor, Saul. <laughs> like, yes, yes. I, I can only go in the way I go, you know, and I believe the anointing on my life is for the unchurched. Come I on, speak to on. more unchurched than I do churched. Uh, I, I almost feel like a fish out of water sometimes in the Fresh church. Out of water. <laughs> yeah. Out of the water. Yeah. yeah. They just, you know, so there, there's that. Uh, concentrate on the three things a year that you can really do and stay close to Jesus and ask questions of, of your pastor. I mean, ask the, like, I didn't even know how to interview, you know, and, and I just need a job. Pay me. I got a job. Yeah. I need a job. I need a job. I need to validate that I'm called by my job. Wow. And, and you, you if I dealt with that, I know every mm. youth pastor in the world, mm. you're just trying to prove that you're a man of God, that you can do this for the kingdom. And, we don't ask good questions. Yeah. Hey, what's the vision? Yeah. What What do you expect of me? What am I uh, responsible for being at? What Here's my non-negotiables. Yeah. If I ever took a job now, I would come in with a plethora of non-negotiables where they probably say, no, you're not the good fit for this. And yeah. praise God, praise I just God. I just saved 30,000 heartaches. Come on, yeah. Come on, <laughs> I yes. saved you three years from yeah. now to have to do this all over again. Mm -hmm. And then I saved myself, you know, the, the, the year and a half it's going to take me to resign. <laughs> so Because yeah. it's never yeah. overnight. Yes. So, you know, but I, I don't think we put enough emphasis. And, and, and you, you know, God has got to speak to you in whatever season you're at. We may 
you know, when me and Megan's kids are up and out of school, we may push the plow a lot harder than we're pushing the plow now. Yes. You know, but we got to be strategic in, in the exact seasons. So I don't know if that answers no, your question, but so I'm good. passionate I, about youth ministry. Oh, I, I, I know that's no, no. Thank you, brother. And that's yeah. why I said, you know, briefly because you're coming back, brother. And oh, yeah. We're going to talk about this. Yeah. You know, we're going to talk about youth pastoring and youth leadership and all of that, because, man, we have a lot of colleagues out there, bro, that needs to help, you know, yeah. and you being on both sides, you being on this side now. I mean, you have a lot of a lot of value, brother, that, that are our brothers and sisters out there that's in that position you know, can really grow and benefit from. And when we're talking about youth ministry, man, again, you know, even for, for those of us that are married, comes back to our first ministry. Uh, Luke, Luke shared some things, you know, that, that, that he appreciated about you, bro. I couldn't get him to record or else he would have got um, attention because he was in the middle of class. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, do you have that up, brother? Yeah. Uh, can you read that to him, please? Is this my Luke? Your yeah, Luke, bro. Uh, Luke just responded and said, Alice's humor an ability to make him laugh. That's what he said. You know, he appreciated about you most. And then speaking of that beautiful bombshell, you know, that, that you've been blessed with Megan also, you know, just uh, shared, you know, what she admires most about you, brother. That's what Megan said. The thing that I admired most about him is his dedication. When he says his mind or something. He does it no matter what the cost is. He is motivated and loyal. Loyal brother, that's definitely I could definitely testify to that, Alex. You know, and that you are dedicated, brother. Um, man, you know, for those that don't know, I'm the guy he replaced. <laughs> you know, I'm the guy that he replaced, and I I I love saying that. You said something earlier, Alex, that uh that you know that God picked your wife, and that you didn't. I'm so I'm so glad that God picked you, brother. I'm so glad that I wasn't involved with the picking. <laughs> you know, I I don't know if I would have got such a good pick. You know, and I thank God for for Pastor Man and just, you know, and really seeing in you what God was doing, you know, and, and how you fit into everything, brother. And I just, you know, just I always wanted to say thank you, you know, and just acknowledge, man, just what a joy and what a blessing. Man, you, you came in, brother, and you leveled everything up, brother. And that's what we need to keep on doing. So we are going to have you back, bro. And, and we're going to talk about, you know, youth leadership and Raising up and youth pastoring, you know, and just making sure we raise healthy leaders, yeah. not just youth, you know, but just healthy leaders, you know. So, 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 brother, talk to me about Teen Challenge. What is that for those who's heard that for the first time? Yeah. So, Teen Challenge is this crazy ministry that we've been talking about all day that saved my life. It is a one year Christian discipleship program. Uh, some people say Christian rehab. It is, uh, probably more discipleship than rehab. But mm -hmm. if you're hurting with any life controlling issues, whatever they may be, pornography, sex, drugs, it's not limitless. If you're losing your mind, you need Jesus, come on through. It is a one year free program. Amen. For one year, you are housed for free, fed for free, clothed for free, and educated in the ways of the Lord for absolutely free. I work for Teen Challenge of Southern California, which is corporate offices, Riverside. I travel and the, our territory is from Reedley to San Diego border. So that's kind of Teen Challenge of Southern California. And we have many different centers throughout there. We have two in Bakersfield. Well, Bakersfield, Shafter. We have Antelope Valley that just started. We're about to get a big Amen. building there. We have uh, Compton. We have the, the women at the mountain in Ventura. We also have San Diego Teen Challenge. And wow. then uh, Riverside, which is the castle. And of course, Reedley, we have a 150 mm. men bed facility Brilliant. here oh, in the Central huge, Valley, yeah. which is the largest of Amen. the centers, maybe one of the largest in the United States. God. Yeah. So basically you come to Teen Challenge and you give up what some would say, oh my gosh, it's a year but you gain a lifetime. They say one year in teen challenge is like eight in the local church. Wow. You are just in pure discipleship <clears throat> seven days a week. Just you, you go through curriculum and teen challenge stands on the verse. Second Corinthians five seventeen. Therefore, if he is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. Uh, that you don't have a drug problem. You have a sin problem. Come on, bro. And God can set you free. Come on, so, bro. Yeah. 
Jesus is the answer. If these other programs were going to work, we would be worked already. <laughs> it would, yes. We'd be good. Uh, a secular program, and I'm not here to bash any other program, but uh, it has like a 3% success rate for a heroin addict. Teen Challenge did a survey where they checked on their people five years later, and it was like 88% wow. of yeah. graduates Huge. were sober, living for the Lord five years later. Praise God. Yeah. What do you assess that to, bro? The, 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 that big gap. What's what's the difference? Power of God. Amen. Power of God. Only only God can save a life. Only God can set you free. And it, here's the problem with addiction in my eyes and why secular addictive uh, resources did not work for me. They work for some, and that's great. There's biblical principles in the 12 steps. There is biblical application in the 12 steps. If you work the 12 steps, God bless you. I'm not working or talking against you. What I see holistically is that for me in uh, a secular recovery, I was fighting the problem. Following Jesus, I'm running after Jesus Mm. and I'm not concentrating on the problem. Wow. So I'm running towards something greater than the problem instead of focusing on keeping the problem at bay. As far as I'm concerned, the like Kevin from Shark Take says, mm-hmm. the, the problem was taken out back and shot dead. Yeah. Jesus nailed it to a cross, actually, and it's gone. Now I pursue Jesus. So I'm running towards something, not away from something. Mm. Where it for me, I to focus on I have this many days clean. Yeah. Praise God. Every year I celebrate my, my nine years this year. However, throughout the year, I'm not trying to get to nine. I'm trying to just live today for Jesus. <laughs> Worry Amen. about tomorrow for tomorrow has enough problems of its own. So I'm not here to argumentatively speak against anything that works against addiction because yeah. I give my life to fight addiction. Amen. So hear me, please. We are on the same team. The yeah. enemy is the devil and the drugs and the addict that came to steal, kill and destroy, yeah. not the people, Amen. you know, the Amen. addiction and the drugs that they're infiltrating on our children. Now yeah. it's coming in, in candy form, fentanyl. This, this is horrendous yeah. what we're dealing with. Yeah. So that, that, to me, in a nutshell, is running after a life to fulfill God's plan. Sobriety is a byproduct, not the end all. Man, that's good. I will say, though, the numbers don't lie. Oh, yeah. The, the numbers are there. <laughs> yeah. The numbers is, yeah, it's, you know, it's clear. I mean, those are facts. Yeah. Those are facts, you know, and, and, and it's, uh, but yeah, I definitely I agree with you about the power of the Holy Spirit. I love what you said, Alex, about, you know, we're not just running from something. We're running towards someone. Yeah. We're running towards someone, you know, because not just what you what you delivered from is what you're delivered to do, you know, and uh, and I and I think a big part of that also is 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 a community, right, uh, of people, you know, in, in a, that you find within a church community or other disciples, you know, that you know, Teen Challenge provides. Um, we we have something special. We have a surprise, you know, for those of you that has never experienced, you know, a Teen Challenge, especially those of you here in the Valley. There's something going down, uh, Alex. Uh, this this in October we had this Fresno Fair, right? Yes. And yeah. uh, Teen Challenge is actually going to be invading the fair. Can you tell us about that, brother? Oh yes. So the heartbeat. Now you're gonna get me all fired up. Praise and and God. I do have uh, something that I really want to share for yep. local pastors out there. Please. that I'm in charge of for Teen Challenge. That is we'll, we'll life that. changing. Yep. yep. So the DNA for those of you who know Teen Challenge. Let me give you a little history. In the 1950s, a man named David Wilkerson threw out his TV and um, went to the city of New York. And uh, it, give some context, God told him to pray. He was in his prayer, uh, praying two hours a day, and he was in his prayer office. And there was a Time magazine about these boys on trial for murder who murdered somebody in Central Park. He goes to the trial. God tells him to go to the trial and he shows up with this Bible in hand and they take this picture of him. The news reporters all made fun of him. Country preacher shows up with Bible at trial and his heart broke for the city of New York. At that time, the mayor of New York deemed a heroin addict hopeless without recovery. Could not. It's it. Once you were a heroin addict, your life was over. You can only contain it. You, you, there was no freedom. And that just didn't sit right with David Wilkerson. And he went to the streets. And the reason we're called teen challenge, like a teenager, is he went for the teens. The heartbeat of our ministry is street youth evangelism. 
That's the DNA. I am in perfect alignment under this ministry for the call of God on my life, which is more than not to young people. And the heart is evangelist. This is what I was birthed out of. Mm. We are a three tier program. We are about discipleship, outreach and evangelism. All right. That's it. That's who team okay. challenge is. So this Fresno fair is something that is in the bloodline of our lineage. David Wilkerson would go do crusades throughout New York. Kids Man. would barely get saved. Addicts get saved. Let's go do crusades. Get Let's go do crusades. Let's go do crusades. And they did crusades all over. So our executive director, Ron Brown, and his passion Praise to God. never missionally drift said, we got to stay true to who we are. Yes. We are not a medical detox. We are a Holy Spirit detox. We are, Amen. you know, other people can medically detox. We're going to stay our lane because that's where the anointing is. And um, the Holy Spirit said that we would do crusades again in the honor of what our ministry was birthed out of. And here in Fresno, California, the Lord opened up the fair, came to us Amen. and asked us to do a crusade. And it aligned with our missional vision and what we do as an organization. And what better place than somebody who went to the fair to drink beer, to feel Come the on, presence yeah. of the living God for the first time. I think of me going to a conference for the first time. So on October 16th, which is a Sunday from 11 to two, we will gather at the Paul Paul theater that sits 5,000 with many different churches. Churches are sending their people as missionaries to the fair that wow. day to go throughout the fair and bring those who are already at the fair. The, the, the Bible says to go to the highways and the byways Amen. and bring that my house shall be filled. Yes. So, you know, that's, a great uh, lineup the, too. Yeah. Oh yeah. We have. Uh, you want to share? Go for it. Oh, Go yeah. for it. Pastor Ron Brown, our yes. executive director. Mm -hmm. Nick Vujicic uh, couldn't make it in person this year, but he's giving a video. We okay. have Swoop Brown, armed and yes. faithful. I'll be opening with my testimony. <laughs> um, we have Gary Wilkerson, yeah. which wow. is the son of David Wilkerson. <laughs> you know the the lineage. He is also the executive director of World Challenge. Mm. Teen Challenge is in over two hundred countries with over twenty five hundred centers globally. Bully. <laughs> because a man went into a prayer closet, Come ended on. up in New York City, yeah. 200 countries. <laughs> Think about that. Countries. We only have 50 states, 200 countries. Every state in the United yeah. States has at minimum one, if not two, or in case of California, it's like 15 yes. teen challenges. Yeah. yeah. Man, bro. Praise God. You know, it's so crazy. We, we went on a short term mission trip to Australia. Yeah. <laughs> I go out into the to the bushes. They call it the bushes, and this is where nobody goes. Is what's right there in the middle of the nowhere? It's Teen <laughs> Challenge, bro. Come on, it's Teen Challenge. It was just a blessing finding them, man. It, it's so, so awesome good. when we, you know, whenever we, were, you know, our our first mission trip was to Samoa, and who did we work with over there? Samoa Teen Challenge, brother. So I I thank God for this incredible ministry. It's made a personal impact on my life. I remember getting uh, those uh, monthly letters. Yeah. You know, from David Wilkerson, man. And those encouraged me, man. And they were always just perfect timing, man, with yeah. the messages, you know, that he was sending out. You know, so I, I thank God so much for Teen Challenge. What's your role there, bro? Yeah. So as director of strategic initiatives and evangelism, my role is to create uh, evangelistic opportunities for Teen Challenge all across the state, uh, events like Arise that I speak at. It's also overseeing all new life expansion. Mm. So that is, uh, I oversee the Antelope Valley and our work there. God has blessed beyond belief. The city of uh, Palmdale and Lancaster each gave $5 million, a total of $10 million and said, we wow. want Teen Challenge here. The days of church and state separation are over. So, yeah. and my job and my heart, having explained how I feel like a fish out of water at the local church, my job is now to go back and build a bridge. So I am also the church liaisons coordinator yes. between, I work with the Assemblies of God and Pastor Amen. John Johnson and, and trying to create the bridge between Teen Challenge and the local church. The hope of the world is the local church. Yes. The the the, the, good, the church is where Man, Jesus built. It's not Teen Challenge. Come on. We are a parachurch. We are a bridge. So God gave me the word, go be a bridge between yeah. Teen Challenge and the local church as we're sending arrows that are going to pierce the gates of hell. Come on. So the local church is the answer. So we are here as a support ministry. The local church 
Cornerstone knows, but majority of churches don't often know how to deal with addiction yeah. or this massive fentanyl. And the face of addiction my, has my, changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is no longer yep. a gang member or mm. just for minorities. It could be anyone on earth from any background and any type of social status. So I have many different hats that I wear, but here's what I'm excited about. Mm. And I can't wait to share this news if you're a local pastor out there. We are in the process of creating the curriculum, which is a one-year program for the local church that we are just going to bless the local church with called New Life Community. Wow. So that we're going to create an app where people can be in community. We okay. teach them how to worship. Here's wow. your daily songs, your daily scripture. Man. We have a four tier yearly program where we teach them about the presence of God. First and foremost, the presence of God is what you need yeah. more than anything. Then time management. How do I manage my time? Then leadership. You know, how, how do I become a leader in my yeah. church? How do I become a leader in my community? We, we take them through these tiers of discipleship, time management, and learning different tools throughout the year. And then we bless the local church with that. But we also have an army of 16,000 alumni. Mm. We have people just sitting in churches wishing they can get engaged. And this is nothing against Celebrate Recovery. We love Celebrate Recovery. We are for Celebrate Recovery. Amen. We have alumni. But this is something more presence-driven. Yes. And more encounter with Jesus driven than, uh, you know, a step. This is a little more Pentecostal, yeah. uh, if you <laughs> will. So that we are going to be about the presence of Thank God you, and really partner with yeah. the local church that activates a lot of people. So uh, we already have Pastor uh, Kevin Foster here at LifeBridge awesome. Church, yes. where I ha already have a leadership team built wow. with him that we meet with monthly. And we're just about going to roll this out in January, mm. and that'll be our pilot. But this will not only go across the nation, the world. We're piloting something where our people that experience this God at Teen Challenge that is like, oh, man, I wish I could just be in Teen Challenge again. Well, now we're creating a discipleship tool yes. for the local church yes. to weekly have something yeah. at their yes. church, brings people in. And if they're, you know, need addiction recovery at a higher mm. intimacy, bring them to Teen Challenge. We're here already. We're doing this. Oh, awesome, but then we man. send them back to you as leaders in Gosh. the local church. Thank you, God. And then there's a ministry for that. So that that's really been one of my higher tasks that we're working and okay. praying through. And I'll also say we're believing for Los Angeles like no one else. Come on. I wear the L.A. hat not just as a Dodger fan, Amen. but for the city, because I believe that city is going to see the revival Come on. that this world has never Lord seen before. Uh, uh, they say that Los Angeles, especially Hollywood, is America's microphone and mm. God will speak. Wow. And there will be something to happen in that city. And I know I'm a part of it. And Amen. I know that's why I was brought to here, to the state. Um, and we're believing for miracles in the city of Los Angeles. We have a ministry institute with 100 plus warriors for the kingdom, pumping out more pastors than most Christian colleges. Mm. So there is an awakening happening there. And, you know, I get to oversee that. So there's a lot of fun things I get to do. I, See, I, that's I why you get excited, right? Yeah, I can't believe <laughs> like, I get to do this. Yeah. Most of what I do, I did for free. <laughs> so the <laughs> fact you want to pay me is just icing on yes. the cake. Yes. Yeah. 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 So th in a nutshell, that's a few of the hats without the day-to-day -day things Man. that I do. As far as fundraise, you know, speaking of fundraising, mm -hmm. if God puts it on yes. your heart to drop a check to Teen Challenge, I just hijacked and did an altar call right here Brother, in the middle on. of the service. That's what, that's There's what we a do, link Amen. below. Uh, we'd love, we work on donation based Praise only. Yes. And you're not just giving to a ministry, you're partnering with heaven to change a life. Amen. This Amen. is what you're giving to. My life was changed. My Thank wife's you, life was changed. Thank yeah. you, God. Amen. Yeah. Amen, bro. So, I want to make sure that, man, that, that that we really capitalize on this, you know, because, man, you put out a lot of great information. Uh, we're, we're just used to the fire hydrant approach, you know. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But, man, I'm going to slap a hose on there to yeah, slow it down a little please. bit because I want to make sure that we connect pastors and that you guys are successful, especially with this new life community. I mean, that's amazing, brother. So how can a pastor right here in the Valley or just, you know, it's watching this podcast, how can they connect, bro? How, how can they uh, get more information, you know, about this um, 
It's this whole new thing that you guys are working on. So I think we just made breaking news, right? Yeah. Praise yeah. God, bro. We just got a newsmaker. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Hey, but get how, the little how like they... TV sound right now. And... <laughs> <laughs> but again, how how do how does that pastor that's watching and wants to connect them more, more information? Where do they go, bro? Yes. Uh email me. The they should put the link up there mm-hmm. right now too. It's alex.delgado at teenchallenge.org. Please email me. Send in a request, whatever church you're from. I will respond immediately. Amen. We we will come to your church. We can do an assessment of what would look best for you. Uh, and this is something we want to bless the local church with, where your people lead it. We don't want to come in and take over anything. This is a tool for the local church. Our alumni are probably already in your church, <laughs> so they will activate and, you know, but people, it's for the local church. Yeah. We believe in the local church. We believe in you, Pastor. Without you, there's no hope of the world. So thank you for answering the call that Jesus is going to build his church. So this is a, a tool for the local church to use. Yeah. Amen. And I would love to connect with you. And we have uh, churches all up and down from San Diego ready to go on this. Praise God. And Pastor, let me also speak to you. You know, we have a lot of great uh, uh, ministries out there that will that will take our kids and people. They just won't send them back, yeah. you know, and we know that's, you know, that that is something that, you know, the local pastor has to deal with this. He just said it. Alex just said it. They'll take the, they'll take your folk and train them up and, and, and get them to heal up and all that. But they will send them back. Yes, they will send them back, man. So I, I, I love what I hear, man. I, I'm barely hearing that for the first time. And I'm I'm on board, brother. I want to know how, how we can help, especially here at Overflow XT, you know, now now. Why can you share, bro, with Teen Challenge? You know, we, you shared your testimony, brother, but but maybe somebody, you know, is just jumping in, you know, at this point. Can you share a story or maybe two, you know, of, of what Teen Challenge has done that you've witnessed, brother? Yeah. I mean, to narrow it to one or two, I've seen millions of miracles. I can honestly say that over the last 10 years. Uh it's just miracle, 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 miracle. I mean, the the whole organization is a miracle. The fact that we celebrate 60 years this mm-hmm. year, uh, just in Southern California, Jubilee uh, year, Diamond Jubilee is our anniversary. Um, you know, obviously the the largest miracle I saw was in my life. Yeah. But it's not just my life. So I opened this podcast with the same boat that brought me to this country was caught with 800 kilos of cocaine on it. Well, my cousin, Alex, who I have the same name as, uh, would go and get caught eight years later in Spain on a traffic violation. And he was extradited. And during the drug war in the 80s, he was slapped with 20 years fed time straight. And he did 18 and got out and started smoking crack. And the family said, hey, there's a new Alex and he's in California and he's about to be a pastor. And within 72 hours, he was on a plane to San Diego teen challenge where he would graduate teen challenge, graduate the Bible college. Now he's driving a truck all across the United States of America after working for teen challenge. I think he's got like one class to be a pastor if he chooses. So I have seen my family (laughs) completely radically transformed by the power of Jesus Christ Everyone in my family is saved. That's the miracle. Thank it's you, not God. just for the person. God chose the foolish, <laughs> the addict, to save the whole family. My grandfather, before he went to now meet Jesus, gave his life to the Lord and became born again at the end of his life after being a good man, but really not serving Jesus. Yeah, And that wouldn't have gotten him to heaven. So I think of all the families that have been restored. Amen. I think of my children who now grow up in a church, yes. you know, so there is millions of rest restored families. That's why I said millions of miracles. Yeah. I may have not physically seen mar- a on. million miracles, yeah. but it's like that ripple effect. When you throw a rock into the lake, you don't know how many ripples Mm -mm. you'll never, ever, 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 ever know. I have shared my testimony everywhere I go on earth. I mean, I'm at the mall testimony, jacuzzi at the gym testimony. I'm just waiting for a chance. Amen. And we don't know where that's gone. So the, the power of a transformed life, no one can deny. 
And I think that's what I've radically seen over and over and over. I saw a man withdrawing from heroin. God didn't do this for me, but I saw it with my own eyes. Flushed, pale white, chills, shaking, sweating. We prayed for him. I, I saw it. His whole face went red. Sweating stopped, and he was done withdrawing from heroin. I was like, God didn't do that for me. You know, <laughs> it was unbelievable. Before my eyes, I saw that. No one can tell me that. I don't Man. care where your theology is. I don't care what doctor you are. I saw it. <laughs> Thank you, God. It's crazy. Amen. So, yeah, so many stories. Thank you, my brother. Phil, do you have anything to ask Alex before we wrap it up, brother? No, I just I just want to wish your your mom had a birthday a couple oh, days yeah. ago. Hey, you man. want to look up to say happy, happy birthday to your mom this yeah. week. Happy Aww. birthday, mom. I love you. Thank you Praise for God. never giving up on me and all you've done for me, my yes. family, and uh, the decision to come to this country. I love you. I wouldn't be here without you. Thank man, you. that's so awesome. That's so awesome. You know, back to the pastor. For those of you are watching, you know, make sure you get connected with Alex. And, um, you know, even those churches that do have celebrate recovery or any type of addiction, you know, or recovery uh, ministry, it, there's different strokes for different folks. There's some people that just won't go to a certain one. They might come to, to Teen Challenge and vice versa. So get in touch with Alex. Alex, I want to make sure that we get uh, all of our, our family to get out there and support as they can. So if they want to throw some extra cash your way, bro, where do they go again? Um, we'll the, link. the website. Yeah, okay. the teenchallenge.org has a website. Excuse me, has a website. Donate. Hit the tab. Amen. Right amen. Now. So let's make sure that we get behind this. It's amazing uh, ministry. And 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 thank you, Alex, for, for getting to, to your, your cousin, because that's my favorite part. I yeah. think one of my favorite parts about yeah. your story is every time when you say, man, when your family told him there's a new Alex yeah. or there's another Alex, you know, and just the response. So he got on the plane and flew, man. And that's my prayer today that you get on it. You know, for those of you that listen, you've heard a lot, a lot, like, like Alex said, millions of testimonies, millions of different things that God has done. Why wait? Why give God, you know, uh, just what's whatever's left, you know, when you can give God what's now, give your life over to him now. If you really want to experience true freedom, if you really want to experience, you know, what God is really all about. And for those of you that are going through an addiction, you know, and just suffering, you know, through, through, through addiction, man, I strongly encourage you, you know, to, to man, just, just Connect with Teen Challenge. Find one. There's one right next door to you. you you'll never know where you find it. Click on that link. Man, you know, you know, Alex, you know, man, thank you so much, my brother, for being here, man. I love you, brother. And, and thank you for, for just, just allowing to make yourself available and your life available. It's not easy, you know. Uh, so, but tell us, what's next, brother? I know you got some things coming up. I know there's something particularly at the end of the month that you're getting ready for, bro. Yeah. Uh, I have uh, an Ironman coming up in three weeks. So three weeks <laughs> from Sunday. It's actually seven days after the Arise Crusade. Praise all. Oh so yeah, gosh. the following Sunday, uh, we'll be going to Sacramento. I know you're coming uh, yes. to do a uh, 140.6 miles. Amen. 2.4 mile swim, 112 Ooh. mile bike, 26.2 mile run. Uh, it's a weird, crazy hobby of mine, uh, but I enjoy it. I'm I'm tired just hearing you yeah. say those yeah. numbers. I know I Philville know. is. I can't yeah, do I was like Iron Man, Marvel. Oh yeah. wait, a whole different thing. Yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you said hobby, bro. You said hobby, yeah. brother. Yeah. Like, it is a hobby. You know, yeah. you said hobby. You know, you mentioned something else earlier about that shoe game, brother. Yeah. You know, like man, I mean, I, you're from Chicago, bro. It's yeah. a, it's it's, it's a definitely um you know a, a thing there, brother. What's your favorite uh What's your favorite shoes? Uh, the retro one Chicago colorway it's dropping this year again is probably favorite sneaker of all time. And then I'd go with the retro three after that. Jordan. Yeah. Jordan's definitely favorite shoe, but yeah. okay. I'm going to yeah. test the family. Yeah. So overflow hit us up comment, man. I want to know what your favorite shoe is and let's see if, 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 if Alex uh, shoe game is on point with you and guys. If you want size 10, 10 and a half on that retro one, if you cop, <laughs> I really, really yeah. need those. Uh, <laughs> they, they dropped this year Pretty at uh, black Friday, I believe ish. Amen. So yeah. So 10 and a half. So how do you have your, your, where do you have your shoes at? You have it all stacked up. With I had them all really yeah. nice in these clear boxes. And my daughters came and destroyed everything. So <laughs> oh. now I have them on the floor. Uh, I do have the nice ones in their box uh, still stacked all up. Spinning and lights <laughs> on them and everything. I went. 
<laughs> you know they do have those where I they see magnetic. that floor yeah. Uh-huh. go. Yeah, I ain't that bougie. I wear them all now too. I no, was yeah. in the rese- resell yeah. game for a while, but oh, now yeah. I just enjoy them. That, Amen. Nice. Amen. Childhood memories. Amen. Well, thank you, bro. Because yeah. that's definitely one thing you bought to to corner so man. You, know, you bought a whole lot of suit game. Next thing you know, everybody's got a suit game. Yeah, game. now they all do. I yeah. was like, man, I got to step my game Praise up. Praise God. Now. Amen. Yeah. But thank you, bro, man. Again, so so this uh, so by the time this airs, you know, this Sunday, as a matter of fact, we got cornerstone. You know, that's going to be at the uh, Fresno Fairground. But the Sunday after, you know, the Sunday, uh, the next, the following Sunday from today, we are uh, we're gonna uh, be there with Teen Challenge. What what time is that uh, event again? Eleven to two at the Paul Paul Theater, Sunday, October sixteenth. <laughs>